Okay, today I'm going to show the Riemann integral. As you may already know, the Riemann integral is trying to figure out the area of a function. Sometimes we really need this area, for example, to, uh, to obtain the probability of a distribution a function. We need the area in between two uh, uh, two numbers that basically we, we have the interval, the close interval for that. The area will mark the probability in between these two numbers, right? So we understood in for previous videos that the derivative in this case represents a super small uh, a portion of the function whenever we have uh, the slope for that point, right? Um, and the, the, is the, the, the differentiable uh, part is the distance between these two numbers that basically we try to make it smaller and smaller tending to be zero between them, this distance. So if we zoom all these uh, uh, bars, basically we theoretically could get the area between the, the function, right? But this bar, you know that this is a rectangular form. So it's not counting for the changes that we have in the top. But because we said that we are going to reduce it to the minimum, we may have basically a line by line by line on all the infinity sums will get the, <coughs> the integral. So, but the, the Riemann integral have actually a formal definition and that is the purpose of this video. So, we have to recall some concepts like if we have a closed interval, which we know in the real numbers, a closed interval uh, is also, <coughs> uh, I mean, it have some properties that we have also in real analysis that, uh, we will see in a moment. Uh, we have this close interval in, in R. A partition, a partition P of this close interval is a final set of points. We will have this final set of points such that the first one basically will correspond to, to A, to one of the, of the stream left. And it will go all the way to the, the last point, which will be exactly the other stream of the interval. If P and Q, let's say these two are two partitions, then uh, if P is a subset of Q, then Q is a refinement of P. This is just a concept that we should have in mind. Okay? So, for this part, let's suppose that f is a bounded function defined on a, b. What it means a bounded function? Bounded function is that basically I will not have an indeterminate point. For example, if, if I have the, the function uh, like this one, it is going to infinity as it goes to zero then the function is not defined basically at zero, right? We, I, I cannot say that it's going from zero to B, right? In this case, I cannot basically um, say that it's bounded. So for in, the way that it's bounded is that in, in any of these point, the F of X, it will not go to infinity of minus infinity, okay? So, this bounded function defining of a of a between a and b, and the partition p is a partition also of this interval. For each i from one to n, we let, and now we have a new concept here, this capital M of i of the function f is the supreme value of the function f in this subinterval created by the partition okay so let's say that my function is going up like this 
in this case the minimum point will be the inf infimum will be this one and the supreme number will be this one okay if we have another function let's say something like like this one and i have this sub interval right and next e this will be the infimum and this one will be the supreme number okay so here we are going to have in between this interval which is the maximum number that we we'll get from the function f of x okay and that is it is the capital m the same with the lowercase m of i evaluated in f is the infimum number of the same function evaluated in the same in sub interval of the partition so if we let the difference of delta x will be the distance between this uh, sub interval we is defining the upper sum of f which respect to p p is the partition that we are uh, um, analyzing here to be this one basically the summatory of all these supreme values of these sub intervals okay and the lower sum it is exactly basically the same but with the infimum value of the f um, in between this interval okay sometimes we call this the dark boss sum because this was the, the guy that introduced this before uh, Rayman. So now what? Now we have this that if we assume that f, I mean we assume that before, is a bounded function of being between the interval, this closed interval, there exists number n, uh, the lowercase n and the capital case n such that the function is in between i mean this is the basically the definition of a bounded function right so we can also write that the the whole sum in in this case is also uh, bounded for any partition that we have and we can have this i mean but you will say where is this coming from this is coming from from all these summatories. So if, we, if I sum all these uh, values, basically here, as I, we are doing the, here, we, have, we will get the, the, the full distance of the function, right? From here to here. Even if I am getting h of one, I am taking the whole distance, right? Multiplied by the lower, uh, a value that we have here n that we say this is the, 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 the lowest the same thing with the highest and we will have that in between we will have the upper sum and the lower sum upper and the lower one this could be less than this one but also equal this implies that the sums indeed are also bounded so all these sums are also bounded in between of these uh, points. So now let's continue. Let f be a bounded function defined on the end, which said that before. U of x, in this case, will be the infimum upper sum of any partition p in between a of b. Okay, so I am taking a partition whenever the upper, I mean, and, 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 and get all the upper sums, and then we will get the infimum number, the smallest number of all the possible sums that we can get there. This is called the upper integral of F on AB. Okay, similarly. <clears throat> L is will be the 
supreme value, the maximum value of, of all the possible lower sums for any partition P in between A and B. Okay? This is called the lower integral of X on A and B. This is the upper and lower integral, R equal to F, and this basically F is the Riemann integral on A, B. Or we can just write the, the, the nomenclature that we already know of an integral, and this is only the case whenever the lower integral is the same as the upper integral. The Riemann integral of F on a b is this okay but you say okay but that could happen for any function oh, oh no that is not the case imagine a function let's imagine for for example a function f of x whenever let's say it is one uh, when x is irrational irrational right and zero when x is rational in this case always the uh, upper integral of x will be one and the lower integral of f will be zero, right? Because in any point that we have, we will have an irrational number, which is up in one, and we will have zero in any of the rational, and the rational, and all these numbers are dense, right? So this function in this, but this is a particular example whenever we cannot apply the Riemann integral because this function is not Riemann integrable, okay? That is why we define it uh, here, that we need that these two integrals, which are the infimum and the supremum of the, sum, the uh, summatories, um, the double sums are basically the same, okay?